All right, so I'm back at Stowe Lake. Uh, I'm here today with Cedric and Mike. Uh, gonna be doing some plein air painting. This is a spot I've painted quite a bit, but I always find it so challenging. So I'm back here for the challenge. Let me show you what I'm thinking. All right, so I'm thinking of doing a square composition, maybe something like this putting the water line at kind of around the top third, you know, including quite a bit of water here so I can work on reflections. All right, so I've got the Anderson easel painting on a 16 by 16 inch panel today. Uh, I've got my usual palette of colors. A little bit of Viridian here left over from uh, my last painting. It's a little guest color today. And uh, using Liquid Original as my medium. I've got an assortment of brushes, but I'm gonna probably do most of it with this um, natural bristle flat, number eight. There's actually quite a bit of uh, moisture from the tree up above. Keeps on dripping onto the panel and palette. Less talking and more painting. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so have you, uh, have you decided on what you're gonna do? Yes, I'm thinking about doing the boathouse right over here. Okay, let's and, take a look. Um, yes, so I also want to get a little bit of this here uh, cherry tree in the mix. Oh, you owe oh, this red tree to the left? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay, so yes. a little bit of something going on in the foreground. There's something going on in the foreground, and I really want to get my rowboats in the mix, and I, I, I simply want to put everything in the mix. You want to, you want to include it all? I, I, I want it all. And why not? 12 by 16, I want it all. <laughs> all Brand right. new socks and drums. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a recipe for success. Yeah. All right, Mike, where are you going to cut it off to the right? To the right, probably just past that green boat. Yep. Okay, so like right there to right there. Yeah. Are yeah. you going to include any foreground here no, too? I, I may, possibly, depending on where I'm going to put the sky on this one, I'm still trying to figure that out. How much sky I went in versus how much water I went in. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to learn more how to paint the reflection, so I may put more water in. Yeah. And so that could bring some of the foreground into this painting as well. So All right, and see. you're working on a 12 by 16? That's right. Something like this, I'd say just focus on the simple shapes as usual. Yep. I mean, because there's so much, it's so complicated. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all right, well, I'll come back and, and see how you guys are doing. So this is the basic composition, uh, water line, kind of towards the top third. Um, these are reflections in the water here. The boathouse is gonna be about there. I don't wanna get into any detail until I like the arrangement of the shapes. Um, I do have another challenge here though. This tree above me uh, is collecting the fog and then dripping it down onto my panel. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's lots of areas where there's water dripping onto it, uh, which is less than ideal. And then also down on the palette. I know the water will stop dripping at some point, but uh, it really is kind of a problem. <laughs> um, I've tried painting in misty or rainy conditions. It definitely does not work. Um, so I'm going to try to figure something out here. Maybe if I tilt the panel so that it's in such a way that it will not get water on it. Maybe that'll work. We'll see. All right, so I put my paper towels behind the panel so it's tilting just ever so slightly forward. I think that will work. The palette, that's another story, but I can work around that. All right, so I like the arrangement. So now I can come in and start getting a little bit more specific with the shapes. I'm changing some of the shapes like this tree right here or this grouping of trees. Uh, is more just like of a round shape. I want it to be a little more irregular. And uh, let's see, there's some other little bushes in here. And those will be reflected also in the water. There's some boats right here. Um, I'm not gonna get too detailed with those right now. Um, there's a couple more in the foreground, like one right here in that area, and then one 
like right here. And I'm just going to place these with simple boxes for the moment. I'm not going to get, again, not putting any detail in them. And I'm going to have to work quickly because, you know, all of this uh, fog is going to dissipate probably within an hour or so. And, and I kind of want to go for this foggy effect. All right, so I'm making a dark mixture here with ultramarine and some of this leftover burnt sienna and uh, some rainwater and liquid. And there's some darks under here. because like a doorway in the building. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to really try to keep this thing loose and quick and not get too hung up on uh, detail. I may end up using the large brush for, you know, once I've established these darks, I might just switch over to the large brush and just stick with that. Um, I like the continuity you get um, when you use one brush, especially if it's a complicated scene that I might, you know, uh, be inclined to uh, overdo with detail. The large brush kind of keeps me out of trouble. Okay, so I've mixed up a variety of grays here, just using ultramarine blue, titanium white, and some burnt sienna. Just trying to establish values at first. And I want, as I mentioned, I want to work quickly. And this number eight natural bristle flat is really nice for covering the panel quickly. Uh, the next area is right in here, which is lighter in value slightly than right here. Adding some titanium white. One thing I notice is whenever I'm, you know, trying to paint atmospheric perspective, I tend to just go way too dark. So I may end up even lightening that. All right, I'm going to stick with this gray color for the sky. I feel like I need to establish the sky before continuing. Uh, little bits of sky here and then also actually over here. All right, pink tone. Got your traditional palette. Got the traditional palette, yes. Is this like your combined forces over here? Like both of your paints? No, that's, that's all I stuff in that's, my backpack, yeah. You come prepared, look yeah. at that. All right, so I quickly blocked in approximate colors. I thought I was filming and I was not, my apologies. But anyway, it's same as usual, just looking uh, for simple shapes, approximate colors. And it looks like I'm going to need to darken some of these uh, values. The trees and the reflections compared to the sky and the water are quite a bit darker than I have them. So I'll probably try to get, you know, an accurate value for the water and then I'll darken everything accordingly. So like these trees in the background definitely need to be darker. First, I'm going to adjust the color for the water and I'm noticing it's slightly green. Uh, it's like a very pale green, so I'm using titanium white, uh, some cadmium yellow medium, and then just mixing in some of this, <laughs> whatever this is. Sometimes I just grab, you know, sort of neutral colors or gray mixtures to kind of calm uh, down some colors or desaturate them. I think the thing that makes, uh, you know, makes it look like reflections is when you keep the edges soft. Uh, there are no real hard edges unless the water is very calm. So I always soften the edges of reflections. And then I try to keep most of the strokes um, vertical. And then there'll be a few sort of horizontal strokes that, uh, that reflect the sky that come across, something like that. That's just a, an example of how I go about it. I'm gonna change these shapes, but um, that's the basic idea. Soften the edges. Uh, do a lot of most keep most of the vertical uh, most of the reflections vertical and then come across with some horizontal sky reflections. They're moving. Trying to, yeah, it's still getting. I tilted my panel so that it doesn't get uh, the you know the water from the tree, but mm, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I've got a few drops on mine so far. Yeah, the palette is another story. This this worked though. Tilting this definitely worked, but. Uh, just trying to establish my values at this point. Yep. So you just That's keep it real thin, shape. trying to find the tone and value. Yeah, I'm thinking this this I is mean, going to be the lightest color. light. The water is going to be the lightest light. Yep. So I'm, you know, kind of establishing that first. This actually, that's kind of an awkward shape there. I'll change that a little bit. And I think this kind of comes across. 
again, I can change all these shapes. I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, getting nice uh, relationship between the sky reflections yeah. and the trees. Mm -hmm. Values in the beginning are more important, like mm -hmm. in the beginning of the, uh, you know, to make sure that the value relationships are all good. And then I can adjust the colors yeah. and, and brushwork and edges and all that. But, you know, the arrangement of shapes is number one. Mm -hmm and then making get the value uh, structure solid and then uh, and then work on edges and you know cleaning up the drawing and that sort of thing got it okay um excuse me uh-huh hi are you emma jimmerman's dad i am yeah i'm so sorry i don't want to disturb you no no that's all right no problem um can i can we take a peek sure for sure okay. All right, so I want to add some of the dark portions that I'm seeing right in here and then again, you know, darkening this area. One of the challenges, you know, painting even in fog is that, uh, you know, the values and the colors are constantly shifting uh, because the fog sort of comes and goes. All right, there's kind of a pattern like overall over the top of the sort of a pattern like this and I, I'm squinting and just looking for big shapes and darken this all and this painting could end up being a total disaster uh, but I don't care I always have so much fun I'm over like worrying about whether a painting is good or not uh, it's I always feel like I learn something, and I've mentioned this before, I feel like I learn more from the paintings that don't work out than the ones that do. All right, let's check in with the boys here. All right, so wrapping it up, huh? Oh, yes, wrapping it up. Yeah. Looking really good over here. That's that, uh, what is it? The uh, radiant, radiant green. green. Yes, oh, I love it. Yeah, that's super strong. Yeah, I know, and it actually matches the colors over there. It really does. And cool. I actually got to um, pick out a little bit of this uh, selection of greens here. Oh, so, there's another green. Yeah, so I use a little bit of that for this one here, uh -huh. and even for the outer area with yeah. a lot of white, just to get that tint going. Yeah, that's got a lot of punch to it. Leaving that pink sky too. Ooh, I'm leaving the pink sky in. That's um, right. It's a winner. Pink sky is a winner. <laughs> that's, that's right, man. The sky changed so many times today. Yeah. And so you're seeing kind of pieces of each of those phases. Yeah, I think that the, like I was saying, I think having soft edges on those shapes yeah. gives it that feel where it looks like, you know, where it looks like water. It's so. almost a Bob Ross thing. Yeah, yeah, it's that Bob Ross trick of like <laughs> vertical strokes and, and then the a little brush. bit of, and a few little horizontal ones. Yep. Yeah, 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 very cool. This painting definitely needs some touch-ups. There are areas that I'm actually happy with. I like this portion right in here, the reflections and the way the boats are handled. I think that the, um, the boathouse needs a little bit more definition, so I can either bring it back there and work on it or just uh, sort of live with it as an experiment. I do feel like I captured the foggy atmosphere of the day, so I'm happy with that possibly just a little bit of tune up in here who knows it could maybe make this work all right so this was definitely a challenging day you know starting off with like water dripping on my palette and my panel um, and then it's always a challenge you know filming <laughs> uh, trying to paint and film uh, like I said this is you know, challenging subject matter for me too um, you know and I'm gonna keep returning to that spot I love painting there uh, it was fun painting with Cedric and Mike as usual um, Cedric does have a YouTube channel and so I will link uh, actually I think he was filming as well so I will link to his YouTube and Instagram down below and then also Mike has an Instagram so I'll link to his Instagram if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel uh, there's a patreon link down below got a bunch of extra videos on my patreon and also a materials list and like I said it really does help support the channel it keeps me making these videos so check it out. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.